It's the Man in the Mirror podcast. It's Hayden, and you're very welcome along. Man in the Mirror is a podcast where each week I talk to a male guest and we discuss their life, their work, we discuss some of the products in their morning and evening routines and what the guest really thinks about the man that looks back at him in the mirror. Now, I like to think we've covered lots of products on the podcast and all kinds of things that make men feel good, really, whether it's internal things or, or external products such as skincare, grooming, shaving, fragrance. There was an area that I felt I, we haven't really talked about before, which was tanning and, and self-tan. And recently I got the opportunity to sit down with James Reed, who is the founder of Self Globe by James Reed, which is one of the top tanning product ranges there is. And um, yeah, he got to tell me much more about self-tan and of course his journey in this sector from working in retail to being a, a tanning artist to then launching his own range. And um, as you'll hear in our conversation, I got the opportunity, I was very lucky, they, they sent me some products beforehand. So I got the opportunity to try it. And I think maybe I had some preconceptions about, you know, the smell and, and how difficult it would be to apply. But that definitely isn't the case with the self-glow products. So look, let's get into this conversation. It's James Reed, who is the founder of Self-Glow by James Reed. And just before we do, just to let you know, there are no adverts in Man in the Mirror, uh, you may have noticed. But I do have a coffee account, which is a tipping account. And that is at ko-fi.com forward slash man in the mirror. That's ko-fi.com forward slash man in the mirror. And any donations go towards the running costs, basically. It's the, the editor, the various upload services. So if you enjoy the content and um, and you enjoy what, what I do on Man in the Mirror, I'd love it if you could head over there and, and drop a donation. That would be amazing. And of course, you don't have to. And I know, you know, it's heading to Christmas and, um, you yeah, know, it's difficult out there, but anything would be hugely appreciated. So with that said, and without further ado, let's get into this conversation with James Reed, the founder of Self Glow by James Reed, talking to me, Hayden, on Man in the Mirror. Let's go. Welcome along to Man in the Mirror. It's Hayden here, and I've been joined this week by James Reed, who is the founder of Self Glow and Tanning Expert. Um, thank you so much for joining me, yeah, James. Thanks for asking me. I love you, big fan. Oh, thanks, <laughs> really, really can't. And we've we found out we, we've been talking before we've been uh, on the podcast, and we have. We probably talk longer, yeah, but than when the podcast is going to. Honestly, I think we did our best twenty minutes, but uh, yeah, finding out about our background, similarish age, and connections in Kent and the Kent coast and, and, and all that good stuff. But um, I said to James beforehand, and I'll be really honest, I, you know, I'm really interested to find out more about self-glow and about um, tanning in general and your experience because I think the listeners of the show, you know, some people will be very familiar with tanning products, but I think some people, it's great to hear about the self-glow range because, like me, I wasn't... Um, I don't know. Is it rude? I didn't feel like it. It, it was something that fitted with my yeah. regime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in in recent weeks, knowing I was going to meet James, I was uh, I was lucky enough to get some of the, the products, and I've I've been using them. We'll, we'll talk about it later. But I, I'm definitely yeah, I'm I'm a convert, and I think there's really easy wins and really easy ways to to use the products that work. I mean, obviously the. I hope everyone listens to the podcast, but I know predominantly it's a, you know, it's a male audience. And I think there's some, yeah, there's some, there's some products here that are really going to work. And James is absolutely at the top of the tanning game and looks at it in a, in a holistic way and, and a, and a different way as, and as he will tell me about. But I think first of all, it'd be great to just to find out a bit more about your, your background and, um, you know, now you have your own products, but what was your path into tanning? Did did it come? From, did you work in another sector of beauty before, or did you come straight into this from from school? Because you you work with lots of celebrities, and mm. and and you you were a, a tanning artist a while ago before the product. But what got you into 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 the world? I suppose well, actually, tanning. It, strangely, I actually trained as a chef. Did you? And I trained as a psychotherapist, Carl Rogers, personal centre counsellor. Right. And then I uh, kind of just changed direction. I moved to London, got a job in retail, 
And they is this hired. early 20s? This was like 20... No, actually 19. Yeah, so I came to London when I was 19, got a job at John Lewis. Yeah. Oxford Street. Then what counter... What, what I were you doing in John Lewis? Uh, um, I was in the place to eat at restaurant. Yeah, so I was kind of like... Um, well, you could think of there. No, just, it was one of those things, you know, you had the separate counters where you could do like pancakes or you did... Gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was that. And then I then moved to the bridal registry... Then I moved to Selfridges, and then from Selfridges I went to Peter Jones, and then um, one of my friends that I got friends with, he said that there was a job going at Saint Tropez. Yeah, and Saint Tropez wanted someone in Debenhams, Oxford Street, um, so I started a job in Debenhams, Oxford Street, just on the shop floor. Um, I was never there; I was always on like a three-hour lunch, <laughs> um, and then I'd come back and go, "Oh hi, um, oh, where have you been? Oh god, such a busy day." Yeah, like really make a big deal about it, and then got away with it. I did, yeah. But then I, what I would do is this is where I think my skincare—I got obsessed with skincare. I would go to all the counters and like, like get someone to do me a facial out the back or during the day, or I'd just use all the creams. So I'd literally—I I think the prairie used to tell me up because I'd all their testers were gone. <laughs> I, I would put cream on like once a day. It was every 20 minutes. I'd yeah. putting cream on. I mean, I was obsessed. And then... Um, you were getting to know... You were getting to know all the different yeah, product ranges and, yeah. and brands. Yeah. And then also just like I, I loved like just... I just liked the feeling of using skincare and how it how it made your skin look and how, my, how I felt using it. And did you did you use... Were you interested in, you know, before the retail piece, were you interested in skincare and kind of grooming yeah, ever, stuff anyway? Ever, ever since I was a kid, I used to use my mum's Nivea, I used to use, and I used to use the tanning wipes. There was these tanning wipes, sachets you'd get and you'd just rub it over the face and neck just to give you a bit of a glow. Right. That was my first dip into, like, kind of using self-tanned. Yeah. And then... Were they pretty, pretty rudimentary, I yeah, guess? Yeah, they were they? in, like, I think it was Superdrug, it's called yeah. Pantow. Yeah. And then I, I, when I started to work for San Tropez, I loved their rub-on, I loved their mousse. Um, I remember I used to put the rub-on on, and which was, like, kind of, you'd put it on, it was, like, then you'd rub it off, but it would leave your skin looking a little bit, like, kind of, um, like you had been tanned. And then yeah. it, it got darker and darker. But I remember once I put it on and it had a white shirt, and it was like I was sweating on the train, and it's like... Running down my shirt. That's a big so, nightmare, isn't it? So, like, yeah, people, is it Trump or someone, you know, where, where the sort of the fake tan, or it might have been Rudy, Rudy Giuliani or something like, you know, the sort of brown copper colour going down your shirt collar or something. Which has never happened to mine. But uh, never with self life. So I then, um, yeah, then I then started doing tanning in uh, the, there was like a kind of little bit of like a broom cupboard there where, so I used to, people press come in, celebrities would come in. And then... Sorry, in which store? We're in Debenham. In Debenham, right, yeah. yeah. And then I then... Saint Tropez then got me to be there, like, kind of... Um, Michelle Feeney came on ball. She, yeah. So it was like the... And then she's now... He's now Ball Street. Yeah. yeah, and I love her. But she was like... She pushed me to the forefront and made me be like this artist for Saint Tropez. And I used to do, like, Lady Gaga, Mariah Carey. So you were almost had this ambassadorial sort of education and all as well. Yeah, so it was like they'd use me to do... And all the PR, so I would... Michelle was originally at Mac, so they did that 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 artist relations yeah. um, at Mac, where they would do the, the makeup artists would do celebrities, and then they they then do PR and yeah stuff like that. So it was like that, and then so I, and I glossed over. Sorry, t- tell me about some of the people then that you got to you got to yeah. Have. I met some amazing people. I mean, even Lady Gaga. I got Lady Gaga to come into Deborah's Oxford Street. No, I, it, to get a tan. I mean, this was like the beginning when she did. Um, just dance and yeah, okay. And it was, um, yeah. And then I, the thing is, it then just spiraled where it was just one celebrity after another, after another, and into the store. Um, no, yeah. as in going to there. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, and it actually, you know, there was always I was always working night and day, and I loved it. And it was, you know, such a. And I was always very. Um, I think when I was younger, you know, we're talking like twenties. I was right cheeky little chappy, you know. Um. And didn't have that attitude where I didn't really care about anything. I did, but I kind of like was a bit just like kind of blase. And, mm. um, but yeah, no, I enjoyed that. And then I then decided after like eight, nine years of Sandra Pray that I really wanted to go on my own. So I then um, opened a salon in Sanderson Hotel. Um, and this was So like, this is about sort of elevating the experience, I suppose, yeah. James. And you, you said, you know, obviously we're, we're all familiar with. The, the tanning salons will be on the high street and, and even in, in kind of spa type places. But this is about making it more of a, a sort of luxury experience and, and a little bit more considered. I felt like it was just 
spray tanning then would be like people were embarrassed by it and that it was the whole Ross from Friends um, thing where people always commented and said I don't want to look like Ross from yeah. Friends so it kind of you got that whole sort of dark thing that, I mean that episode made tanning bad it was like yeah. kind of it stopped people getting spray tans it put, right. put it off especially guys as well they kind of saw it as a negative mm-hmm. um, so my goal was like to make tanning more luxury more premium create a menu where you'd come in and you pick different looks different like a a fashion town which was like your 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 skin that's on show around your outfit so you've got your like a if you've got a dress you've got your legs done or your hands done or your or your kind of arms or your face it's it's, it's technically you tan around your look so okay it complements your look it doesn't yeah. empower it you know, it was usually do red carpet. Yeah. And, it was, yeah. and it was like you'd had loads of celebrities coming in and to the sort of yeah. yeah and it back in the day it was like, well that was the really hot place none still nice Back but in the day it was really like oh it was like the place to be i mean them red lips as you walked in on the, the sofa we just looked it and it was always that there was always a party there it was always so celebrities always stayed so i'd always go to their rooms or they come to the spa and and what products were you using at that point was that was that your so I used, um i was using um central bay yep um and then i got my own made up my own like formulation and then i then decided I wanted my own brand. So um, I thought, you know, so I went out looking for investors. And that's a big step, um, though, isn't it? You obviously had the ambition and the drive to say, you know, I, I don't want to just use what pre-exists. Do, do, was it about, did you think you, you obviously thought you could sort of improve and there were things that you could do better well, I, with the product? Well, what I did was when I left San Play, I carried on, I started to be a, a, like a, an ambassador for all different brands. Right. So we taught, I carried on doing stuff for San Play. I did stuff with L'Oreal, Garnier, um, Sally Hansen, Guerlain, Clarins, Dior, um, like literally loads of brands. You know, it was the case of they'd get me in, I'd create a... Um, an idea and a concept for their new launch and then I'd launched a product for them um, so it was like so it was like consulting and yeah, yeah. yeah so it was and it was like so many brands I mean it was and it was the best times but the great thing it gave me that was that knowledge of like the industry of formulations of, of products and yeah because it's as you know I talked to lots of perfumers as well and, and there's obviously a, there's there's a real sort of a knowledge that you would have to have on the actual chemicals and the product. It's yeah, it's quite sort of technical yeah, stuff, yeah. isn't it? So you have to have a huge amount of and, of knowledge about that. And I think like then I I thought you know about obviously launching my own brand. So I launched James Reed Tan. Which yes, was like had gold stripes. Yeah, and it was. So that's the previous thing. Yeah, no, previous yeah. brand. And that was more. That was the first of its kind that that led the way for skincare and tanning. And yeah. um, it was like kind of the first. Um, and the formulations, I literally worked so hard on it. It was the first ever, I, I launched the first ever overnight sleep mask that was like a, which set the trend a year later, everyone was doing it. So it was mm. like, it, it kind of like shaped the market and made people, uh, before people were just doing body products and then you'd, you'd they'd use the same body and put it in a face and they never really focused yeah. on the face and did people then copy so everyone they yeah. kind of like which you know was fine with but i think a lot of brands there was at least eight brands that bought out an overnight mask the following mm. year so I, I as i know with beauty or with when you do a brand you've got one year to really make your impact because the following year people will yeah. use your ideas or use it name devices or even with the you know and then you know, self glow was very much you know the old brand i kind of felt like a it it had, it had run its course. It, I loved it, but it was 13 years. I felt like the, is it that long? 13 years. Yeah. And I, but I felt like everyone was moving in the same direction as the brand. And I wanted to elevate it to the point of making tanning luxury again. Cause I felt like it's lost its luxury. Yeah. yeah. And I felt the market in general, beauty was going more premium, more luxury. So rather than just reformulating and, um, you know, changing the packaging, I thought I'd start again. So it's a full, full refresh. Full refresh. Yeah. Because yeah. I think. You can't rebrand or redo your uh, uh, existing product and then charge more money no. because technically the customer's used to paying a certain amount. Yeah. So it had to be something special. The packaging had to be special. The name and devices. I mean, I worked on the packaging with my friends. We worked on it together and it was, you know, six months of with my friends just coming up with ideas and, but, you know, just really just trying to really delve into something that was unique and different. But also the formulations, the same. I worked with, 
like they're all mine, like my DNA, like of my ideas and just I'm such a perfectionist where it has to, each formulation has to be, it goes through like probably 20 samples yeah. because I'm, I'm quite, it has to be so good that I don't want anything that's not great about it. And yeah. I, if someone, if, if my mum loves it or my neighbour loves it, um, then I, I know that it's good. Yeah, yeah. And you coined the phrase with with self-glow of skincare first. Yeah. So is that a different philosophy that it, you know, it does good for your skin as well? I mean, when so when I formulate it, formulated the products, it was the skincare was the first thing that we worked on. And then the DHA, which is obviously the ingredient mm. energy, was added after. So I, whereas a lot of people focus on the tan first and then add the skincare after. Yeah. So this was like looking at new ingredients to the market. Even next year, like the kind of new products, I'm looking at like the next level skincare. Yeah. yeah. We're not, you know, this is about something that's unique and different. You want like the you want someone to be wowed. Um obviously in the new pro- in the existing products you've got like all different types of hyaluronic acids you've got fermented ingredients which is first for tannin so like fermented mushrooms yeah so i i saw that on the press release i was intrigued so yeah how do what do mushrooms do in they actually help like with your cell renewal you right know, they help with your skin barrier um they're also super hydrating um so each ingredient in the the product is is all about looking after the skin, like the overnight um, mask, which is the dust till dawn. Uh, that one, you literally go to bed and your skin the next day is just looks a better version. But it's got like hyaluronic acid filling spheres at like high levels, so it plumps the lines out. It's um, it's also got three D, four D hyaluronic acid. It's got squalene. It's got fermented in uh, mushrooms, fermented aloe vera. So there's so much in there. It's doing all the great things yeah. that good skincare is doing, but then also with the with the and, extra element of and also tanning. it allows you to not use your moisturizer at night if you want to, because it is a super moisturizer, or you can just layer it over your normal moisturizer. So it's yeah. You were saying earlier it's about a product you've used some of the products, yeah, and they're about fitting into your skincare routine. Yeah, yeah, and it not being some big extra step that takes yeah loads of time. It's it's so interesting. Look, we're going to talk much more about self-glow in a while. But as always on the podcast, I'm really interested in having a little route around your bathroom cabinet and finding yeah. out about other... You know, it sounds like you've got this background in in retail anyway, so no doubt very familiar with lots of brands and, and um, got your own routine down. So I wonder, yeah, what sort of products do you have in your morning and evening? Yeah, I mean, I'm a bit slightly obsessive when it comes Are to you? Um, putting... I, I mean, I probably... Do you stay loyal to stuff or do you like to I try do. different things? So I love Medicaid. Um, yeah. Such a great brand. I love their vitamin C SPF um, 30, which I use all the time. It's always important to use your SPF yeah. in the winter. Absolutely. Because it's you really want to look after your skin. Um, also, I like they've got like a hyaluronic acid. They've got um, like so much um, face um, cleansers. So I recently trained as a facialist. Um, Did you? Uh, last year. And the, the whole thing for me is about um, creating a facial, creating... Um, like I, I really want to delve into skin to the point where I know everything so that you have the knowledge. Yeah, and that's, I thought to myself, you know, if I'm going to be really skin-led, I need to really go into it even more. Yeah. So, which I love doing the facial. I mean, obviously with ADHD, um, doing the course, I was very, very, uh, always uh, like kind of throwing jokes out and that I think everyone was laughing, but I think the, the, the two to try to love it so well. Actually, we are actually become really good friends. Like Carol, she's amazing. Like a great, um, uh, teacher mm. um, for skin but I was like um yeah I was always cracking jokes I can't I can't and also half the time I it, I had to redo the exam because I, I didn't pass the, the last two modules so I had to redo them again which Did, was there theory parts as well as yeah. practical parts so yeah. practical I like literally I was amazing yeah I love practical but when it comes to theory I can't take information in so I had to like literally study the second time because the first time I literally just looked at it like the notes like the day before, which technically you know that's not going to, yeah, it's not going to happen. So, I, but it's funny as well, isn't it? I think you know. Also, we get out of the practice of study, don't yeah. we? Like I haven't done. I don't know if you had, but I certainly haven't done exams for a long time and having to sort of get the right answer on. Yeah, yeah. So you get a bit out of the, out of the practice of doing it. So that's what happened. But it actually, doing the course actually made me realise actually because I never cleansed. I never was, was never really person that exfoliated, even though with self tan you should exfoliate yeah but 
it, it's it's I I now have this whole routine that I do. You know, you cleanse, you exfoliate. But the great thing about my product and is that all medicate stuff, uh, and also La Prairie. I love yeah. La Prairie. Um, I love Ren. Ren do really amazing. Ren look great. Ren are great. Um, so it's just, and also I love like fragrances as well, which I find really uplifting. Like love Diptyque and. So yeah, what's your relationship with fragrance, James? Do you do you tend to choose according to the season or your mood, or do you have a kind of fragrance wardrobe? How do you approach? Well, like, actually, what do like you wear? Even with products, like I'm half Italian, so even with the products, they're oh, in, yeah, yeah. I see that now. Half the uh, the fragrance in there is very Italian inspired, but it's very a low level, and also it's non allergenic as well. So it's because I'm very sensitive to fragrance. So you know, I. Just even it had to be everything had to, sorry in the self you talking about you know, in the self, like, yeah so they do smoke it and but I wanted that I wanted you to to take you on a journey even though yeah. packaging you've got an arch and each each box has got a different arch and that's an inspiration from uh, Ralph Crane like a famous photographer in the 1940s I and it's that. in Capri and there's a couple looking out the window that he took a picture of and it's they're capturing moments yeah and beauty is moments so each. Each arch on the the actual each box gives like a different memory. Or when I was younger, and yeah, it's, and the sun is in. So we're just looking at some boxes. The sun's in different places in the yeah. Guys. And then mm-hmm. and, and then you've got the sun on the actual uh, packaging. So the sun is your life. Like sun is your vitamin D. Sun just is just it lifts your skin. It makes you feel good. And that's what the whole idea with the products are. It's like self glow is about feeling good, looking good, being your better version of you. Yes. Um, and I literally, you know, uh, fragrances in general, we were talking, I go off track. Um, but I love Sorry. Burrito. Yeah, Burrito. I love bro. Burrito, I love Diptyque. Um, but I do what some things do you like? Um, I can never pronounce them. <laughs> Tam Dow, one of those. <laughs> There's all different, I've got, I've got like loads in my bag, but I'm one of those that go through probably like one um, one a, a month. To you? Because a whole one, because I yeah. spray it on like it's a deodorant. Constantly. Yeah, but I, I, that thing of, you know... We don't need to save stuff for best. Thing. I mean, obviously, fragrances are expensive, yeah. as is skincare. But, but yeah, I'm just get it on, spray it. I, I know, I think so. But it, it just having a nice fragrance makes you feel good. Putting nice skincare on yeah. makes you feel good. Using the self tan makes you, you feel good. And do you? It, sorry to lock onto fragrance, but are you into particular sort of categories of fragrance? I.e., are, are you all about? you know, ambers or do you like uh, sort of uh, kind of citrus ones or floral where um, or, or, or all, of, all of the above? I mean, Diptyque do a really good um, limited edition summer one they bring out. Yes. Um, yes. Which I love and it's quite citrusy. Yeah. Um, so summer I'm quite, I like to, but I, I like to sometimes custom blend. So I'll use... So like, you'll layer with you. With yeah. different um, fragrances to then... Yeah. You get your unique, get your own one. Yeah. But I love that feeling when you've got a fragrance and then someone says, you smell nice. Yeah. I mean, that is such a good it is, isn't it? feeling. Yeah. Because it actually, and you go, oh, it's so and so. I can never yeah. pronounce it anyway. But I put it in my bag. <laughs> get it out. It begins with O. Oh, that's what I, I know. <laughs> But I love even, even yeah. candles and diffusers like um, Floral Street. I love Floral Street. I love Diptyque. You know, it's just that feeling when you walk into a room and it smells beautiful. You yeah. just feel good. Yeah. Well, you're obviously sensorial kind of person as well. And what about um, shaving, James? And you're quite sort of clean shaven. Do you, do you sort of leave it for a few days, or do you? Sort of I probably do razors or wet. Um, or what do you use? So I use like, I do a wet shave, but I usually do it like on a Thursday. So I do like a wet shave and I shave my head. Yeah. Um, so it's so you do it all thing, once, all, all at once. once, and then by the weekend, uh, it's then got a little bit of growth, and then I. The next day I put my tan on. So yeah, good. Oh, so best, yeah, best to put the tan on when it's sort of clean. But I, I always, but I always spray it on when I've got a beard. I spray it on like the sun blush, which you've used, mm. the water mist. It's like eight to seven percent natural rose water. There's no added fragrance. There's no um, alcohol, but it's just the most natural color when you put it on. Instantly, it's like it's clear, so you can spray it on. It doesn't transfer, as you know. Yep, won't change the beard a different color, but you just look fresh and looks lovely. Yeah. So look, we we talked about the sun blush, so I want to get into that one because yeah, this is the product that I've really enjoyed over the last couple of weeks. And so, oh, it, it wasn't a category that I'd thought was for me too much. But yeah, the ease of using this product and yeah, and there's really clear instructions of a spray to the front to the and then to each side, and then make sure you do the neck. And then you, there's a there's a chart on the side that says, you know, you could do it once a week for a, a fairly sort of light yeah, yeah. hand, or then you can go glow dial, glow dial. There, yeah. And then you get or 
two times a week or three times a week. And I think I've done, so over the last couple of weeks, I've done twice a week. But yeah, just that it, really easy to use, doesn't, hasn't got that sort of roast chicken no. smell at all. And, um, you know, it, we're in the UK here, it's mid-November. We're not going to get a whole ton of, you know, sunshine now. So it just, it just made me, it's not a sort of huge discernible difference, but I feel better for it. Um, and it's just, yeah, to give a slight glow. And it, yeah, it certainly isn't any kind of, you know, really extreme artificial no, colour. And I really, healthy. yeah, thank you. And I, I've, I've loved it and I've loved the ease of it. And I think it's definitely something that I could incorporate into my regime really easily. And I think maybe that's the key. And obviously there'll be products there that men will enjoy using if, if, the, you know, if they're into tanning and there's drops that you can put into your moisturizers or things you can leave in overnight. But I suppose that, that's it. That sunblush is a great product just for sort of e- ease of use, right? And also it's done so well because it's... it's is, it, is it a really popular one? ...into your routine. Yeah. I mean, all the products do, like the drops, the sunbright drops and everything. But it's, I, I love all my products are very much about... They don't, I don't want to compromise your beauty routine. I want to, I want to enhance it. And the products add that extra. Yeah. And they just make you look good. And I've never been about a full-on over-dark tan. I've always been about healthy, glowing-looking skins. It's nothing yeah. worse when someone says, oh, my God, what are you wearing? What tan... Yeah, that whole thing, you want someone to say you look healthy, you look well, have you been away? Yeah. That's the trick. Yeah, exactly. And I think that somewhere deep in the sort of recesses of my mind, that that's the approach I would have even to fragrance and grooming and skincare and everything. I, it's not, I, I'm not particularly, I'm not particularly into massive sort of heavy hitting fragrances. I like things just to be quite yeah. subtle and to not look like, I guess, you know, I've tried too hard so this that definitely fits the bill with with something like that and and the other thing with I've, I've been thinking about your work and 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 um self glow you know you you're very big on body positivity and dealing with you know different skin types and and different bodies i mean i wonder did that come from doing it when you were when you were doing the, the tanning you know you 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 have such an intimate relationship with with people and and seeing all kinds of different bodies and skins did that inform your approach or do you want to make sure that your brand was for everyone well actually uh funny thing is i did this campaign years ago with l'oreal and it was for the stylist remember the stylist yeah I love the yeah. Stylist. yeah and it was we were the first we did this it was a five page um article and it was on, it was called the uh, um, Tanning Tribes. So there was like different skin tones. It, yeah. was, it was to show uh, people that actually it didn't matter about what skin tone you are. Yeah. Um, anyone can look healthy, anyone can look glowy. And we got this year, which was amazing, we got nominated for an inclusive, inclusivity award. Yeah, correct. Um, like for best brand campaign and marketing, um, because we show different skin tones. We show that the fact is that it doesn't matter, um, you know, also how you look, you're, you know, everyone wants to look good and feel yeah. good. And it, it just literally enhances your skin. It makes you look a better version of you. Um, and I, myself personally, you know, if I'm ever feeling down, I just put a bit of tan on and actually just makes my skin look good. And you feel tired as well. And, you know, especially the weather now, the wind, it's, you know, dehydrating. Yeah. The, the air con everywhere you go in, it's like the change of temperature. So um, the good thing about the products, they've got so much skincare and they actually help with hydration. Right, right. right. And sustainability is important to the brand as well, isn't yes. it? That you want to do good to the planet. So there's a there's a big piece around the brand of making sure that you're not um, doing anything detrimental to, yeah, to, they, to the planet. And also every year you can improve on what you do as well. So even the packaging is like, um, is 100% reused plastic. Um, you've got glass... But we naturally source our ingredients from the UK and from close ties, closer closer parts of Europe. So then yeah. we're kind of looking at our carbon footprint. Um, and then also we, we're the first ever brand in the world, the Cell Town brand, to not use a synthetic colour guide. Um, so usually your colour guides have like a yellow undertone or a green undertone or they um, a reddish undertone. Yeah, it's... This is much more, we use cacao extracts. Right. So the cacao naturally warms any skin tone. So you just get this warmth. Right. Um, but also you don't get the issue with the green in over months, over yes. six months. But it just looks when you, it, it just is amazing ingredient because also it helps with, you know, your skin. It's also an antioxidant as well. 
but it just makes your skin look even more radiant. And that's what I love. Like the Sunrise to Sundown is like a no makeup makeup serum. Right. And we've been sending that to loads of um, film sets. Um, and Amazon recently have just been shooting a new TV show. We just sent them loads of that. Have you? I just sent some to a makeup artist the other week for celebrities. So loads of male actors are actually asking for the products. Right. Um, because they just love the fact it's just like the mist, the sun blush mist is massive, um, with, um, celebrity males because it doesn't change the bit, um, color. It just mists on. It's easy to use. You can put it over your makeup, your SPF, your moisturizer. If you're on a film set, you can just layer it on and then put makeup over the top or, you know, an really versatile. And I love it because I'll be on away and I'll put my SPF on and I just spray it over my SPF. So I'm being protected. Yeah. Also, it's actually giving me a glow. So yeah. technically, the glow isn't from the sun. The glow is from cell glow. But actually, technically, people think I've called the sun, mm. which is the trick. And have you seen, in terms of your male customers and, and your time in the industry, have you seen a, a shift in how men approach self tan in in recent years yeah i mean i did this article for the times um and it was like the rise of the the man tan and the man tan the man tan and how they yeah the article is quite amazing really how the trend for is is doubled with men and how the rise is it's just becoming like even skincare and in general. Back mm. in the day when I was younger, it was like, you know, with similar age. Yeah. Okay. You didn't, um, you weren't, yeah, it wasn't, you were up. Right. Yes. No, use your SPS. No. We were told, don't worry if you're, if you get um, burnt, you're going to be brown in a couple of days. Yeah, yeah. And also moisturizers. Well, people used to also have those sort of, those like silver cones almost had it yeah, yeah, sort of yeah. almost in cup, you know, and it's all kinds of horrible oils and stuff to basically harrow oil and it's stuff. Really, yeah, it was but the thing is so I I look back now and think when I was younger, you said what a wasted holiday because all you did was just sit there all day in the sun. You never went and saw the islands. You never saw you were never went out for the day. It was like really? you'd always get up at um seven or eight o'clock in the morning to make sure you had you put your towels down before anyone else yeah. and you'd get a book that you found randomly and put the book on the towel so someone knew you were reading or Jackie Collins or Jackie Collins yeah that was just there it was so bad. and then I would literally get up right and I realised that someone's got up earlier than me and taken the spot that I wanted Damn. the one that was in the that was the 360 that caught the sun the whole day so I would then get up at like six o'clock in the morning or an hour before they would then get the, yeah. get the, the, it became the whole task of the day, isn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah, yeah. The best sun, the sun lounge. But the great thing about self-tanning now is like, you were saying about men as well, a lot of them don't sit in the sun anymore. A lot of them care for their skin. They don't want to anti-age. They don't want to, you know, the sun is great to walk around in as long as you've got your SPF on, but to sit in it now is... It's, you, People don't do it so much, do they? Just, yeah, and as you say, that sort of intentional lying for hours on end just to just to tan and and... You don't, you don't need to. You, you can go looking healthy before you start. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And do you, ha James, do you have any, is there any different advice for men in terms of self tan? You, you've mentioned, um, about, which is great about the, um, the sun blush that I've been using. It doesn't make any difference to beards or anything. Do you have, do you have to give any specific information for, for men about some of the products or is it, or do we, do we treat it in the same way? It's, it's actually in the same way. Yeah. And I think, the so hair, like hair doesn't make a massive difference. No, and I, I've always been about creating products that are easy to use and that fit into your routine, but also they take the scare out of self-tan. Yeah. Know? People, you know, have either had bad experiences, they've never used it before. And if I could say what the, the difference of this brand is, you know, self-glow, is that it's it's all about re-educating people again to show yeah. a different, different side to tanning, but also... Why have three products that do one thing when you can have one product that does everything? It yeah. looks after your skin, it gives you a warmth, it gives you a glow, but also it allows you to build it up. Also, makes you, basically it's a skin treatment as well. So it's everything in one. So your skin looks good, feels good. You know, mm. I'm all, I'm like obsessed with skincare. Like the people, the manufacturing company, Pelham, who wake them up, we did a call today about next year's products and they were like, um, I was like, has it got so-and-so in there? Like, like a new ingredient, like, no, it hasn't. Oh, we need to add that. And they're like, James, you do realise you're adding, I might as well, a novel, a novel. Yeah. Like, some of these products are literally the existing products. I mean, the cost of goods are so expensive because I got, I'm, I really do want so much amazing skincare in there for someone when they're using it because I don't want 
that the typical drying out with the skin. I don't want um, someone to have a patchy tan. I want it to fade like you would never know it's faded. Yeah. I think and as you say, you know, you're trying to avoid people buying multiple products. Yes, but yeah, the one, one and, thing. And also you stuff. just want something that you can just put on. Yeah. I love it because when I was formulating the products, to me, I was, it was, it was like a, it wasn't a chore. It just felt like I was just doing my normal beauty routine, which yeah. actually is what I wanted. Yeah. And what what would you want people to feel like when they use the Self Glow products? You, you mentioned just about, you know, making people feel good and feel feel happy. Is, is that the idea? Yeah, I think it's also like giving them confidence. Yes. Um, you know, if someone's put on a bit of weight and then they use the, the, they use just to have a tan, just makes you naturally more toned and yeah. just makes you look good and feel good. Um, and also if someone's having a bad day or, you know, at the end of the day, you know, if someone suffers from depression or someone's got, you know, mental health issues. And I think the good thing about using beauty products and why they're so rising and the trend for luxury beauty is massive is because it is a feel good mm. actor. Using beauty does make you feel good. If you lose your job, the first thing you someone does is they go and get their hair book, they book a hair appointment, mm. or they, they get their nails done or they do something because technically it just makes them feel good. Like today I've got my nails done this morning. I was like, and the thing, I could probably cut them myself, but actually I love that feeling of going... Yeah, and, sort of and, getting pampered. And also I just think, actually, my hands look all right now, but usually they look like the lady from Titanic, <laughs> like 110, as she's holding onto the, the railings as she's leaning over the ship to throw the necklace. And I'm like, oh my God, my actually hands look good today. Oh, there you go. Less, less rose from Titanic. You're, um, <laughs> well, because you're, you're off on your holidays, holidays, aren't yeah, you? Yeah. I'm off for five days. I haven't had a holiday for the whole year since the brand launch. So it's just nice to go away yeah. and just relax. I mean, I will work. Um, but what I do is because I'll go with my partner and, um, he's like gets annoyed if I work when we go. Away. Yeah. 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 So, um, I usually go to the bathroom and do it, do it, you know, in the bath. He'll go. He, you just done work in the bathroom. I'm like, what are you talking about? Just, you've got a bit of a bad stomach. And you know, I think it was, I mean, the worst race last night. Oh, yeah. The worst thing is that it could happen in the bathroom. I know. Is that you're working? I know, but I literally know whatever lie. I'm like, I'd, I'll go and do like something on Instagram to reply because he otherwise you'll go, oh, just put your phone away. Wait, see you. Yeah, no, it's like, I love it. <laughs> so look, Joe's, the name of the podcast is Man in the Mirror. And I'm really interested in people's idea of, of, of self image. And I think, yeah. you know, particularly with you working in the, in the industry and, and we mentioned before, you know, you've spent so much time. Looking at bodies, you know, for, for better or worse, as part of your your job. But I wonder what your relationship is with your own self image when you're looking in the mirror. How do you feel about yourself now in your mid to late forties, and and what looks back at you? Um, I think I was I'm less obsessed than what I used to be. So I think a couple of years ago, I was very much um, obsessed with like kind of skin treatments, as in injectables. Yeah, um, but I feel that as I've kind of grown out of it a bit. Yeah. And I think... Do you think that's just a, uh, over time? But I've got obsessive. I mean, I'm obsessive. Uh, uh, Full stop. Everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even when I, if I did the gym, I'd literally get a trainer, but I'd, the trainer would have to be like five days a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I'd have to go like for four or five hours. You know, this isn't, you know, it didn't make, you could do one hour and four hours is exactly the same thing, but the trainer would train me for an hour and then he'd still do three or four clients. I'd still be in the gym. He'd be like, you need to go, go home now. Cause you know, <laughs> get the injuries because I'd overdo it. But it, it was all an, I'm all enough person. Yeah. I think, um, and would you do anything more permanent facially? You know, would you do, would you do other sort of treatments on your face? Or? Well, I have done, like, yeah. I've got, I've done everything. So I've done like the kind of Botox. You've done Botox. Fillers, yeah. Um, but I wouldn't do it again. And actually, it doesn't look like, you know, no, you, I don't, re- the thing is, how I see it is the fact is that when you sometimes you do the fillers, like, it, or you do s- stuff to your face. Um, I mean, so I've seen some people and they look amazing with it, but mm-hmm. when you overdo it, that um, you still think you look great, but then when you other people notice you don't, and then yeah, you're right. It's, it's funny, isn't it? There's almost like a sort of yeah, it's fine for a stage, but then there's almost a sort of tipping point, point, yeah, where it suddenly and then and you think it was certain celebrities, you go, I think you need to yeah, like the they, how I, they, they just get it just right, and then yeah. you go to the next level, and or I suppose, but there's also there's that, and then there's the fact that people, you know. People are still aging. Years are still passing by, and I, you know, there's certain names, certain actresses, or pop stars, or whatever. But you think, 
yeah, you looked like your age at that point. Now your face doesn't fit your, you know? And, and again, it's all, there's no judgment because people do exactly what they like, quite rightly, but you can tell, can't you? It's like, a, in a way, it's like a bit like body mis, um, dysmorphia. And, and I yeah. think you just constantly find there's something wrong. To yeah. Your career. yeah, you're right. And actually, oh. after a while, um, there's nothing to correct. You're actually, you then need to correct what you've done. So yeah. it's like, yeah. so I feel that... But your your skin is incredible in terms of, there's no lines or anything. It's like a million creams that I use that are, I'm being serious. Like, I literally use so much skincare. Like, I've, um, I mean, I, you know, probably 10 different types I put on my face. Yeah. I mean, I'm probably not counting. It's working for you then. But... I love face masks. Like I've literally... Do you? I do. Face do you use those LED ones or do you... Um, no, I do like sheet masks. I yeah. do like um, Evelon. I love Evelon Rescue. Do you think they're worth they doing? They do. It, it also just makes me feel good. So mm. if I'm going out for a night out... A bit but, of self-care. I mean, I kind of... My partner does sometimes walk past and like... I mean, if I'm in the living room and he'll be... So going, what are you doing? Like, this is the third mask you've got on in, an, in two hours. Like, do you not... Fall or nothing, you see? Like, I'm... I am like, you know, I can't just use one mask. I'd use three. Like, it's like... And then, I don't know, I just, I just love that. There's nothing worse that when you just come home and you're tired and you've been talking, our job is you talk to people mm. all the time. And I love what I do. You'll need a mask after yeah, this. Exactly. <laughs> when you get home, you just sort of switch off. You want to go and, I want, I want to go to my room and just watch TV. I, I just don't want to have a chat. And then my partner will be like, oh, what's wrong with you in a bit of a mood? I'm like, no, I'll go upstairs. I put my, I'm having a mask, my full street candle on and my diptyque. I'll then put my face mask on and I'll just watch a box set. Mm. And, I, that to me is like just uh, like your kind of TLC. You're, yeah, you're yeah. Making you feel self care. But it sounds like, and I don't, certainly don't want to put words in your mouth, but you're at a stage where you're feeling more comfortable with what you're seeing now. Yeah, and I, I yeah. Just, you know, I think I've, as I've grown up, I'm and less inclined to do stuff. Do you think? Yeah, I, I think also I just think I'm a bit more comfortable in my own body. Yeah, um, and. And who you are. Yeah, and I think, like, even the brands, like, a journey, like, from going from one brand to the new brand, and it was like, it was, I think it was a turning point. I always tell this story, but it's actually a true story. I went to see Tina Taylor the musical, and there was, like, a bit in it where she comes back in 1984. It was, like, the biggest comeback in music street. What's love got to do? Yeah, yeah. And um, I remember leaving, and I said to my partner, oh, that's going to be me. And he said, oh, get over yourself, you're not Tina Taylor. <laughs> but the thing is... I then left and I then thought, I'm just going to delete the brand as dark game. And that's what I did. Yeah. It's your Tina Turner mate. My Tina Turner mate. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to start doing the dance in a minute. Yeah. Um, it's amazing. You can't capture it um, on fast, <laughs> but... Um, we'll do it for TikTok or something. Yeah. Um, and finally, James, what, what are the things that make you happy and bring you joy? M- maybe perhaps outside of the workplace. Uh, I would say family, friends. Yeah. Um, You've got a big circle of mates. I think as you get older, it becomes less. Yeah, I think it does. Um, yeah. And the less is to do with the, um, the ones that actually mean something to you and actually would there, be there for you if you're stuck in the middle of nowhere and you call them at the at mm. hours and they come and look after you or come and get you. You, you There's probably only ones you'd find on your yeah. hands. Like, And I, I think as I've got older, I'm a less... Um, I'm just... I, I like to, to keep my close friends close. Yeah. Um. And yeah, you know, I talk to them all the time. And then the family is so important. Um, like especially my brother, bless him, he was six months ago, he died of cancer. And he was like, oh, so I'm 35. And he oh, had like, um, two little girls. But it, it puts everything in perspective. And it makes you realize that actually um, life's so precious yeah. and so important. And actually, so do you spend a lot of time with your Yeah, my family. I see my family all the time. And I think it's so our own story. Well, man. Yes. Um, thank you. But no, I think um, in general, you are. Uh, if you have good people around you, they inspire you and they lift yeah, you. Yeah. Even like work people that I know that um, that I see, you know, I love to surround myself with creative, inspiring people because that's what makes you who you are. Yeah, and uh, where well, you work, I've got I work with amazing people as well. The team of people I work with, and you're only as good as the team of people yeah. I work with. Honestly, that comes up so much, James, in in the conversations I have with with people often on the podcast. You know that creative people, it's about they get stimulated by the connections and, yeah. and it's, yeah, it's about the, the interactions that we all have. And that's the stuff that kind of 
brings new ideas or yeah and and the team that you work with so but it's it's the thing is as well is it's like if you're if i'm surrounded with people that are negative or about bad energy i i then suck that energy yeah but i then must you my take, take it on yeah. um so i'm mirroring in a way yeah um but um like my friends that worked on the packaging with me like if you the you know chris and rufus they're very you know we created this whole um messaging and the whole brand uh, uh, from you know over six months and you know, it was a real right labour of love, but, you know, technically, um, that was probably the best thing. So I worked with people that I knew that knew yeah. me and yeah. it was, you had to just literally you find that shorthand. Hours and hours of exploring. I mean, if I'd gone to a packaging company and done it, it probably cost, would have cost me hundreds of thousands of pounds because I kept to change my mind 24-7. So it was... Uh, well, you've all done a great job though. It looks, it looks was, really good. Yeah, I'm very proud of it and it's actually a real, like, kind of real labour of love. And, and where... Where can people find um, the Self Glow brand? Certainly, so launched in um, uh, Space and K. Yeah, um, Selfridges is Harbin Nichols Liberties. Not bad, uh, which is amazing. And actually, do you know the thing is to to do that on your first um, first year is amazing. You know, and I was so blessed. That's incredible. But and then and then Australia in Mecca um, and New Zealand, and then um, America is in March mm. next year. And will you go? Obviously, as the the figurehead and the you know the name on the bottle, as it were. Do you, are you, do you like going to these parties? And I'm going, I miss see, I miss traveling. Like I, I love going to Australia. My favorite place in the world is simply in Melbourne. But I also love Canada. We 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 launched in Canada, so I love Toronto. Oh, yeah, and Vancouver. It was Vancouver. What a lovely city that. Is. Amazing food. Yeah, not but nature right there and the mountains. Yeah, and I love New York. Like yeah, like New York for me is like reminds me of like the best times I've ever had in my life. Like, mm. um, my friends would just literally laugh and go out. And it is one of, it's the only place in the world, I would say, that you could probably go and have a civilised breakfast somewhere at five in the morning without, like, in the in the UK you do it, there'd be people punching up for, like, <laughs> legit, it's not, it's that. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's nowhere, like, London isn't a city that sleeps. It's It does sleep. Yeah. Like, everything closes at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, and everything's like it's, whereas New York, you kind of, like, you... You can kind of, there's all them. I love speakeasy, but the, the, the secret little, yeah, like jazz, a little insider place. I yeah. love that stuff. And it like, ju- ju- just sitting there drinking whiskey and just sitting there. I haven't been for a while. I, and I need to get back to you. I miss it. I miss it. Yeah. Miss so maybe, not much. so yeah, spring next year it'll launch in the States. Yeah. Which I'm super excited about. Yeah. And I'm like a grafter. So like, I love, like, I, I love coming up with ideas. Like, I can think of like different PR ideas. I'm mm. always constantly. Think. And there's is there is, to, to is there a lot more competition in? I mean, it's a different market, but I, 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 I'm sure you do sense that your products are doing a different thing to some of the other products in America. Like, is there different competitors there? Or? I think like there's lots of talent brands, and there's some amazing talent brands, you know. But I feel that even my messaging, I know that um, you're like, doing something different. No, I know that even the sun blush and the endless summer and the sunrise to sundown, the sun bright. Um, I know next year people will start naming their products like that. Mm. So I, I think it, it's definitely that would, would have started the trend because the naming devices is, 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 the thinking behind that is the fact is that they're words that you associate with beautiful summer and yeah. actually like sun blush is like, it is about that, that hit of like kind of where your skin's just warm. Yeah. And totally. it's like endless summer is like an endless summer to your skin and sunrise to sundown is a product you put on in the morning and then you leave it on. And it just, it's like when that light hits your skin and sun right is the morning when it's, you've got that sun bright on the skin. And it's like, it is about like creating, so I'm probably going to like, the more products I bring out, I'll probably run out of names. Cause I'm like, I'm like, sometimes I'll sit there all day looking for a name and it's like, oh my God, like, you know, you know. That's but it's interesting what, what you said, cause I think it does feel a bit more descriptive and, and narrative than some brands where it can be a bit more sort of utilitarian and, you know, just does what it says yeah, in the model yeah. kind of thing. So that, yeah, it's definitely doing something. Yeah. And, it, and I love using them as well. I mean, that's the best thing. I mean, I've just said to you now, I just run out of sun blush. So yeah. You're going to just grab a box. Quick enough when I give you one. Because <laughs> we're here at the, um, at the PR company. Um, oh, James, thank you so much. Yeah, it's been really interesting to talk to you. And as I said, as I hope you don't mind me revealing my novice status in the world of, of self tan, but I say I really, really enjoyed using the product. I'm going to absolutely keep using them, and I'll, I'll mention the products that we talked about in the program notes. And um, 
online and, and we'll let people know where they can find it. And I'm so pleased yeah. to hear how well it's going and no doubt it will yeah. carry on next year. And Your fingers crossed. Yeah. I never take any people. No, no, no. But I'm sure you'll go and um, storm it in America too. Oh, but, uh, thank you for making time to see me. I've seen his own address. Yeah, you yeah. should, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Be my comeback, more comebacks. So I've got to do it. We'll get the wig ready. Yeah. James, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My thanks to James. Uh, it was so good to do that in person, which we did a few weeks ago at the PR office of his um, self glow brand. But um, yeah, I really enjoyed that conversation. And yeah, the Sunblush product, the Sunblush Tanning Mist is something that I, I think I'm going to incorporate properly into my routine, particularly at this time of year when it's cold and it's, you know, not easy to get as much natural sun just by walking around it just to make me feel a bit healthier it's so easy to use it's literally just a, a mist that you spray a few times around your face it doesn't have those weird smells and you know i don't often talk about my own routine very much on the podcast there's one episode a couple of seasons of back but um yeah i've got a fairly tight edit and i you know i don't add things um, too often to, to my own regime, but I can see myself definitely using the Sunblush Tanning Mist. It's a great product. Maybe just give it a spray once a week just to make myself look a bit healthier. And it's that sunless tanning idea, which I can totally get on board with and very easy to do. Um, just you know, to have a bit of color and um, to, to look a bit better for me at this time of year but um i really enjoyed that conversation with james and i should say as well that um since we recorded the james reed self glow brand won big at the um marie claire skin awards 2024 for the sunbright tan drops um they won an award so congratulations to james and the team so if you want to find out more about james reed and james reed tan over on Instagram, they're at James Reed Tan, which is J A M E S, as you would imagine, R E A D T A N. So it's James Reed Tan on Instagram. And their website is jamesreadglow.com. James Reed Glow. That's J A M E S R E A D G L O W dot com. James Reed Glow. So you can find out about all the products and get all the information over there. And if you want to find out more about Man in the Mirror, I'm at Man in the Mirror Pod on Instagram and the same on YouTube. And you can find me at You Smell Great What Is It on TikTok. And there's also a, a channel of the same name on Instagram for more fragrance related content. So thank you to James. Thank you to you, as always, for listening. Um, there is uh, a couple more episodes this season and something special to tell you about for. For Christmas and for the end of the season so stay tuned for that but thanks for your company thanks to James and I'll see you next time on Man in the Mirror